Well, this morning I'm doing some architectural photography. I'm going to take pictures of two buildings and I'm going to show you how I process one of the images in Photoshop. Well, good morning. So today I am doing some architectural photography in New York City. I'm going to try to do two buildings in one morning. See if I'm uh, successful. My first uh, location is downtown. I'm actually going to try to shoot the Goldman Sachs building. Let me uh, find a good spot to set up. I'm actually back in my old neighborhood. I used to work down here uh, for many years in the building behind me. Uh, it used to be called the World Financial Center. Now it's called Brookfield Place. Um, in fact, I had a great view of Midtown for a long time. The only thing uh, between me and Midtown was a parking lot. Unfortunately, Goldman Sachs bought that parking lot and decided to build this building, which uh, ruined my view. So I sort of have a love-hate relationship with this building. Well, I'm using my wide-angle lens, my 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Um, right now I'm at an F9 and it's uh, it's not that bright down here just yet, so I'm about one-eighth of a second. That's giving me a good exposure. Uh, I may have to crop a little bit um, in post, but uh, I think I like this angle of the building. Well, got a little too close to the building, and of course, security came out. Yeah. You know, I spoke to you. They're going to come out and just say, listen, you got to leave because you're on private property, technically. And chased me away. Security guys don't like tripods near buildings, so as long as they're outside the property line, kind of in the street, they usually don't uh, give me too much of a hassle. And actually, I don't mind it because I just found a really good composition uh, in the street here. So right across the street from the World Trade Center, back that way, the tallest building in Manhattan. Probably not going to go shoot that today, but I uh, might wander around a little bit, see what else I can find. Well, I went to the uh, other side of the building, which faces west, and uh, honestly, the, that side of the building is just kind of flat and a little less interesting, so no shots there. I'm going to walk around a little bit more, see if I can find something. But uh, pretty soon I'll head up to my other destination. Well, I think I got some good shots of that building. I'm going to make my way all the way uptown uh, to shoot one more building. I will see you when I get there. 
All right, I made my way uptown to 178th Street. It's right near uh, Columbia Medical School, Columbia University. And uh, it's a relatively new building. Not a lot of people know about it. It's called the Diane, or the Roy and Diane Vagelis. Not sure I'm saying it right. Uh, education Center. It's a really cool building. The problem with this area is there's no place to park. You can see in back of me, it's like wall-to-wall -wall cars on the street. So uh, I gotta walk a little bit, but I'll be there in about five minutes. Well, I made my way over here. It's, uh, we're at 171st Street in the far west side of Manhattan. And this building was built, I think, several years ago, maybe, I don't know, three or four years ago. And it's really fantastic. I'm not sure if it's a student center or an educational building, I'm not sure, but uh, it really is a brilliant piece of architecture, as you can see behind me. Uh, I'm not going to use my tripod. I'm just going to get my wide angle lens out and try to get some shots. The light is really bad <laughs> at this time of day. I should come in the afternoon probably, but uh, I'll see what I can come up with and hopefully fix things in post if I have to. Well, as I suspected, this is the wrong time of day to shoot this building. Uh, the spot that I want to really focus on is totally in shadow. I think I could deal with it in post. Um, when I get it on the computer, we'll see. But I'll make my way around the building and see what else I can find. So two good spots this morning, two buildings I really like. Hey, if there's a building that you love to photograph, either in New York or other cities, uh, put them in the comments down below so we all have another place to go to shoot. Uh, I'm gonna go home and get these on the computer. In fact, I'll show you how I process one of these images in Photoshop now, uh, so stick around for that. Uh, if you do like these videos and you wanna see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button in the lower right corner. And until next time, let's jump into my computer. Okay, welcome to my iMac. Uh, this is one of the shots I took of the Goldman Sachs Tower. Uh, I've done a little bit of work in Lightroom already. I converted to black and white. I pulled up some of the shadows, added a touch of clarity and maybe a touch of contrast, but really didn't do too much. I am now in Photoshop. And what I want to do is show you how I turned this image into this image, which I find to be more interesting and dramatic. Um, I've already made a number of selections, uh, and I use the polygonal lasso tool to do that. Most of the lines here are straight, so it's not too tough. For curved lines, I just zoom in really carefully and use relatively short strokes, short lines, to kind of carve out and select uh, that curved area. Um, the first thing I want to do is really isolate the building. So I want to make everything else disappear, essentially. Uh, to do that, what I'm going to do is select, I'm going to load a selection of, I think I called it sky. And again, it's really everything but the building. And I'm going to use a solid color adjustment layer. And I want to keep it black and white, so I'm not going to put color in there, but I don't want it fully black. I want to drag it up the left side of this square here and you'll see it's brightening up and I want to find a, a tonality that uh, is dark but not fully black you know something say like that that works pretty well um, the next thing I want to do is to highlight the curved facade of the tower and so I'm going to go up and select a load selection, I call it curve. And you can see those marching ants around the curved part of it. Uh, 
For the most part, I'm going to be using curve adjustment layers and the gradient tool. And so in this case, I want to choose a curves adjustment layer. And that obviously sets it up with now a nice masked area for the curved part of the building. And I'm going to drag up and this will brighten the entire selection. You can see that. I then am going to reselect. I'm going to choose a gradient tool. In this case, I want to make sure I've got the reflected gradient tool selected. And I can and you want the foreground color to be white, which it is. And you want to kind of drag out from the middle. And what you see is the middle part of the building becomes brighter. Uh, and there's a nice gradient to it. So here's the before, here's the after. You already see that curvature being uh, highlighted and emphasized. And I could do it a little bit more by um, choosing another curves adjustment layer, dragging down, and that will darken the entire selection. I can then reselect. I got my gradient tool selected. This time I want the foreground color to be black because I want that middle to remain where it was and drag out from the center and you can play with it a bit but that gives you a sense. So here's the before, fairly flat, here's the after, uh, far more dramatic. I'm going to deselect that by hitting Command D. Uh, let's deal with other parts of the building. So um, there's a small part on the upper right I want that to pop a little bit more and so I'm going to brighten that up again using a curves adjustment layer. I just pull up and you get that nice contrast between that part of the building and the curved part of the building as well. I think this lower right, I think we can do something with that as well. So I'm going to select lower right and you'll see that big square in the lower right is selected. Sticking with my curves adjustment layer. Um, we're going to use a bit of a gradient here. So I'm going to pull up first and that will brighten the entire selection. And I can reselect, choose my gradient tool. This time I want to use the linear gradient tool. I'm going to pull down. Actually, no, I'm going to change this to my foreground color being white. I'm going to pull down here and you see this nice gradient as it gets higher. Uh, and the sun was beginning to rise. So the top of this section would normally be brighter anyway. Uh, and again, here too, I can um, choose a gradient tool, pull down. I can reselect, got my gradient tool selected. I'm going to pull up from the left and now you have even more dramatic of a gradient there. Uh, I'll deselect by hitting Command D. Uh, let's see, let's do one other section of the building. Uh, let's do this strip on the lower left, this little bit. I just want that to pop a little bit more. And so I'm just going to choose a gradient tool. I'm going to pull it up just so it pops. Again, I think it's a pretty cool feature of the building. Um, the last thing I'll do here on the building is on the, uh, this roof. I called it under roof, but that's this, this little bit of a roof on the left. I want to highlight some of that building and brighten it up. So let me pull up using a, a curves adjustment layer to brighten up this entire selection. Uh, then I want to reselect. I've got my gradient tool. This time I'm going to use the radial gradient tool. I got my foreground color white. I'm going to pull in from here and you'll see the circular part uh, right towards the top is going to get uh, illuminated. And so you get this kind of cool effect. There's a the before, there's the after. You know, relative to the sky, I think we can add a little bit more interest. It's fairly flat. Uh, and so I want to add a gradient to the sky as well. So I'm going to load a selection of the sky. And I'll choose a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to brighten it up. I can reselect. I got the gradient tool. I'm going to make sure I have the linear gradient tool selected. I can pull in from the right and you get this nice gradient in the sky that adds a little bit of interest to it. Now you'll see that I've got some banding there. Uh, you really don't want that. 
um, that can be tricky to, to deal with. One way to deal with that is to add a little bit of noise to it. So if you go to filter, noise, add noise, it's going to add just a little bit of noise. You can see that banding goes away. Um, this is before, there's after, and it really doesn't hurt the image all that much. Now I did play with other parts of the building, uh, but you get a sense of kind of what I was trying to achieve. One good thing to do at the end, of course, is to add another curves adjustment layer to the entire image. So you pull that up and really want to create some contrast typically. So I'm going to pull down on the shadows, pull up towards the highlights, and you get that really kind of dramatic image, uh, at least in my view. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments down below. Uh, if you like these videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, and until next time.